This week's scenario is two fronts and does not consist of the kill box artifice. It consists of two zones, the friendly zone being able to be dominated for one CP, the enemy zone controlled for one CP and dominated for two CPs, and then the enemy objective may be destroyed for one CP once per player. The objectives have defense 5, armor 18, and 15 damage boxes and have the fuel special rule. While the objective is not contested, friendly models beginning their activation within 4 inches of this model can run or charge without being forced or spending focus. Hey guys, this is Blabby Acrobat. I'm playing Exelon Thexus in the Cephalix Mercenary Contract. Um, and in this contract I'm able to take the Pistol Rays and Bloat Thrall to make them friendly faction from Crix, which I thought was pretty interesting. I'm going to see how it goes. Other than that, I think this list just overall has some good synergy with it, so we're going to see how it works out. Hey everyone, Polar Bear Cup here. Um, so with this list, I decided to play Mother, uh, Iron Mother Directix, and uh, this list really focused around taking out a lot of uh, single wound infantry um, with uh, tons of 4-inch AoEs. Uh, the one downside of this list is it really can't handle multi-wound also i think with uh, the ability to push my models around it's going to be a little bit painful so deployment go ahead and start with exelon near the middle of the board there so i can get pretty much my whole army under deceleration when i need it which is like every turn um but i also like to put them with you know the wrecker and the the agitator so the wrecker has his buff but i also have a sack pawn target there as far as putting the, the bloat thrall near him, um, that's usually just so I can clear out some low armor infantry uh, before they get to me, hopefully. I like to spread out the, the pistol rays here to uh, make sure, since I don't know where he's going to deploy, you know, I can get them where they need to go and would be able to deal with a big threat on either side of the board or you know run them to the middle since they're pretty quick. Putting the two subduers on either side for pretty much the same reason just so if I need to drag a heavy or or move something out of the way or knock a bunch of stuff down I can do that on on either side of the board with that 16 inch control bubble you know I can I can spread those guys out pretty far I'm putting an agitator with each of my monstrosities as well as I'm gonna be putting the mind slavers and mind benders uh, next to the subduer up at the top of the screen there so they have that agitator as well for the drudges And then I end up deploying the overlords, my two units of overlords, kind of sparse into the uh, the two units of drudges, just so they can get that sack pawn as well. And uh, usually it's not too big of a problem as far as movement goes, because I can you know move one or the other first and get those sprays off usually, which is always nice uh, for clearing up infantry if I need it, or you know the very rare case of uh, adding some drudges to that mind slaver unit. But I do, I do like to spread out across this whole board here because uh, it gives me that, that edge of uh, being able to be everywhere on the board at once, you know. So we're going to see how this works out. Fumble around a little bit here, but overall it's... Uh, it's uh, it's an interesting deployment, I think, because I've, I've never played against Mother before this game, so I didn't know really what to expect from his deployment and where to put everything, but we're going we're gonna to see how this part works out for me here. Alright, so as I deploy my list, um, I'm just looking at the massive amount of infantry, so I kind of want to spread out uh, my simulators a little bit further. Uh, with the colliery, I'll be able to get out a decent amount of focus, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, also looking to get my unit uh, with Mother, the other two small servitors, uh, in a way to where I can kind of, you know, jump up there and uh, really be able to take care of uh, throwing out some shrapnel storms. Um, I'm liking the hill enough because if I can get on the hill, stand still, it increases Iron Mother's defense. Um, and then it just allows me to get, you know, kind of a better view. As you're looking, I end up changing uh, where my list stays for about three different times, just trying to figure out the best place where to put my units. 
one big thing with this list is I kind of wanted to see, you know, in the fluff, uh, Lucan ends up taking on uh, Exxon Texas and, you know, kind of loses. So I was kind of hoping for, you know, the brand new leader of the Convergence, you know, to put her stuff up against Cephalix. Um, I think that Iron Mother definitely does have game. Uh, the thing I am most concerned about with this list is that I did not include the Prime Axiom, which I think is very, very good choice with Mother. Uh, it just adds some extra protection as well as the hitting power. I, in turn, decided to go with a lot more of the units. And then finally, just my advanced play, uh, I just put the Reflex Servitors out there again just to increase the amount of uh, damage I could do to single wound units. So to start out, um I'm going to allocate one focus to each of my monstrosities here just so they can kind of run up the field and get a little closer um, since they can't really do much else turn one. Other than that, they're, they're not going to do anything exciting on turn one. So I'm moving up my, my pistol wraith on the flank here. I'm going to move up my little agitator. Make sure he's within three inches of at least one of my monstrosities. So he can get that sack pond just in case he gets shot at some point during the next turn. Which isn't super likely. But it can certainly happen. Just kind of moving up my drudges so they can be behind that wall. Get a little bit of cover. Not that they're super valuable. But you don't want them all to die. And I ended up moving my overlord instead of my uh, unit leader, which was really smart of me. They all look the same to me, man. Put up my other pistol right there in the front where all his heavies and his caster is trying to get to. Um, so maybe on the next turn I can get that death chiller off if, uh, if he gets close enough to me, which isn't super likely, but getting him up in that center there is probably a good idea. Uh, make sure my agitator is next to my monstrosity, next to a bunch of drudges. Move these chumps forward. Kind of run them up the field. Get nice and spread out just in case that blast damage doesn't get all of them. Move up my bloat thrall there. So he can be on that hill so he can see what he needs to shoot next turn, hopefully. Walk up uh, Exelon here and put up Deceleration. So if he does end up shooting me, I have that plus two armor, plus two defense, which is always handy. Got a couple of things outside, but that's not a big deal. Put up my other Agitator back there for later and move up my Overlords. Oh, break one. And there we go. All right, so bottom of turn one so really my, my thought with this turn is that i just need to get everything out there um his army is just a little bit too far away to really do any type of damage so um my main goal for this is to uh get the color activated she's he's within three inches of mother so that's a free focus point so he runs and then uh, gets focus point out there and really i'm just uh, running all my jacks to get up there as quick as possible therefore leaves mother with eight focus And then kind of just throughout this uh, this whole turn, um, everything's too far away, but uh, one thing I did do is I only walked the Cypher up. Uh, I walked him up uh, the four inches, then I decided to throw out two Rifts. Um, well, that way, you know, it'll kind of uh, create a lot of rough terrain. It's actually not Rift, but it, it causes a four inch AoE, so no damage, but it's still a four inch four inch rough terrain AOE which is pretty nice so with those two out there um, that it kind of just will delay his army just a little bit more which is always nice um, and then those focus end up eventually end up going back 
Um, when it goes to the reflex servitors, I, I kind of just move them up. Uh, I try to space them out pretty far and I have them all dig in. Therefore, they can add that protection but also create that threat for any of his units that are coming up. And really, just a lot of my army is running at this point. The attunement servicers are going to run out. Um, you know, then I'm going to have the obstructors start activating. Uh, you know, they're going to be walking. Uh, they're actually going to run forward. Um, then usually behind that, I will have the reductors move afterwards, um, and they'll fall behind that. What I want to do is uh, I move the, the Enigma Foundry again right behind the reductors because that's where all my units are. Um, I have some of my attunements going last and the reason why I have the attunement servers going last is I, I needed to have uh, good lanes cleared so that they can run properly to make sure that they get up there. Next uh, I activate the Iron Mother unit. Um, both of her servitors walk up. And then Iron Mother, she um, walks forward. Uh, actually sorry, she ran forward and she camped on all of her focus that turn. Um, then last what I did is I moved up the uh, rest of my army and that was my turn one. Uh, so I don't end up allocating any focus this turn, uh, mostly because I just don't feel like I want to be that close to him and I know I'm not in range to uh, hit anything with this viewer. So we put down the templates for the rough terrain so I know where, where I'm going to have impeded movement or if I need to go around it. Um, so I'm still moving my, uh, my pistol wraith on the flank here. So I can maybe shoot that heavy next turn if I need to, unless, you know, he kills me, or kills the Pistol Wraith at least. Hopefully he doesn't kill me next turn. But I just end up kind of trudging up the field here, monstrosities, and end up putting an agitator down here. You know, so he can have that sack pawn range as well as, uh, Hopefully next turn getting that agitation bubble if I need it. I'm trying to put the overlords here on the, the other flank so I can maybe spray these uh, these guys over here uh, next turn, depending on where he moves them. Gonna move some drudges here into the uh, into the zone, so you know I know I can't score this turn, but getting them in there is gonna help out a lot uh, when I can score, um, and it'll make him have to you know take care of him if he wants him out of there. Uh, moving up my subduer next to that and the agitator where the drudges and the uh, subduer will be able to benefit from him, um, kind of making a spaced out wall of drudges just in front of my army right now um, so he kind of has to go through those before he gets to any of my juicy stuff um, so I just kind of move my incorporeal pistol wraith over here uh, also putting him in the zone incorporeal models in zones are always always a good thing um, gonna take a pot shot with the uh, with the bloat thrall here at this uh, guy in the front end up being in range and uh, end up actually hitting him, which uh, not many bloat thralls can, can say they do. Um, but I end up killing a couple of guys, which is, which is always nice. Um, just, you know, I, I know that they're going to come back anyways, but I was hoping maybe to get more than he could bring back, which uh, ends up not being the case here, but at least it's something, right? I'm going to move Exelon up here, knock over my Bloat Thrall just as planned, and uh, I'm going to put Deceleration back up, um, especially now that we're a lot closer and I'm going to be a lot more of, uh, of range shots from him. Um, so hopefully that's going to help me out on his turn. Um, I don't have much more to activate here. I have a few more of the, the uh, one more Agitator and uh, Unit of Overlords, and I'm just going to put them put them up a little bit and uh, 
make sure that I have you know my agitator batteries for my monstrosities on that side um, and maybe come around the back with the uh, with the sprays if I need them next turn All right, so this is the bottom of turn two, and uh, pretty much with this turn, what, what I'm thinking about doing is because his units are close enough, um, I'm going to pop my feet. Um, I really think that with the two assimilators, the reflex servitors, uh, Mother with Shrapnel Storm, I'm really going to be able to put a pretty good amount of damage onto his units. The, the one issue with this is, is that I really should have thought about moving Iron Mother back further, and I really should have done this because... Um, she's just a little bit too far forward and even if I throw a bunch of uh, like models in front of her Excellent Dex's feet really prevents any type of protection from units because he can push them all away to really draw a solid line of sight uh, to get a, one of his monstrosities or even himself uh, up to a caster if they're too far forward so it's really a good game of Excellent Dex's to, to kind of lull the opponent into that uh, sense of security but um, what I decide to do with this turn is that um, I, I do decide I'm going to pop my feet and then uh, kind of just think about what type of focus I want to do with her. Um, I, I decide I'm going to camp, uh, keep it all focused because I'm going to be throwing out two shrapnel storms. So I start with her um, and then I activate uh, her two servitors and uh, they end up moving forward. Um, and then before they do any type of anything else, um, I activate Iron Mother. And I tried to take a shot at one of the models that's on a hill. Now I needed a four. And I rolled a three. So it uh, deviated, which didn't really do that much damage. I think it caused one point of damage uh, to his monstrosity because he sack pawned it, which is kind of depressing. So then now kind of what I'm debating about is where I want to put that shrapnel storm at. So uh, I measure the distance from uh, the servitor because I arced it through him. And successfully hit. Uh, so then all those models underneath that 4 inch AOE and I'm taking a damage roll but I do the damage onto that model first and it ends up wiping out a pretty decent amount. I think it's a total of 5 models just from there that I end up removing just with one shot no storm which is pretty exciting. Now I'm just kind of lining up where I want my second shot no storm to go. Which, after a successful hit of damage roll on that, uh, I end up removing um, three more models. One of them being his Pistol Wraith, which not having Pistol Wraith on the table is always really nice. It's two range shots that he does not get, as well as he does not stop one of my jacks from uh, doing anything. Um, so next what I'm looking at doing is my uh, my Reflex Servitors. I'm um, thinking about having them start charging forward and blowing up. Um, the first Reflex Servitor, he's only going to get one guy. Um, but I figured... It's close enough, I don't think that they're going to last the next turn, so might as well start using them now to blow up, even if it's just removing one model. And also one of the things I did was I kind of kept my assimilator a little bit too far back, so I, I need to move um, the rest of my models in order to get uh, the the simulator up there. Now the last thing I did do was I did uh, end up casting firing group for two focus and what that allowed me to do was uh, move another two inches forward. So um, I activated my tomb conservator and I'm trying to shoot uh, to roll to get uh, you know a flare on a couple of the models so that uh, they're easier to hit. Uh, just because you know some of his models being on a hill that uh, makes it extremely difficult. The one that's summoned later on the left hand side is not really going to get a whole lot of action just because there's not any units over there that he can really damage. Um, but it is going to rely onto the cipher, he's going to induct focus onto the cipher to uh, try to knock out well, not knock out to try to lay down some more rough terrain, uh, hopefully, to prevent any type of charges.
So the assimilator goes and uh, he drops down a shot, taking, you know, hitting four models. Uh, the one downside about this is a lot of those models, all those models have sock pond, so they could all sock pond onto the warder. Um, actually, sorry, the wrecker. Uh, and it looks like, you know, I'm just trying to get some damage onto really anything I can. Uh, it's a power push strength 12, so if it hits, it's going to do some damage. Just, you know, I'm hoping to soften something up. Uh, and I'm uh, boosting one of the damage rolls to try to knock as much damage onto the, uh, the wrecker as possible. And uh, my mechanics, they did activate earlier and they walked up. Um, they, one of them gave a magical shot to the diffuser um, so that I can try to uh, shoot out the other uh, pistol wraith. So with the lucky, it did hit. Uh, I did about four points of damage to it, so not enough to kill off. Um, the, the the pistol wraith. And next what I'm doing is I'm activating the cipher and I'm trying to lay two uh, more rough terrain templates. Unfortunately that one did hit him because uh, I really wanted it to deviate um, a little bit back towards me that way it created good enough rough terrain an area where uh, it would not uh, it would stop him from really doing any type of charges. Um, that second uh, AOE kind of drifted off further to the side so it did not allow for a good one so he the one wrecker is placed right in the center of an aoe but there's a way for him to to get out So now what I'm doing with my obstructors is I know next turn that uh, he's going to be able to get off some charges. So I'm just trying to spread out all my obstructors and my reductors pretty far and put the Enigma Foundry up there. Um, that way that the Enigma Foundry can kind of just, you know, put stuff out. Uh, he did have some models that were killed, so the Enigma Foundry was able to bring them back, uh, which is pretty exciting. Right, and then finally um, I activate that last simulator so the assimilator is right now just lining up um, the one shot again I'm trying to get as many models as possible so I just place the AOE down and I think I get about four or five more models a uh, pretty good grouping for you know which I'm excited about because I end up getting um, with three folks on I'm gonna be able to hit a lot of them and uh, you know hopefully remove them from the table which I end up successfully doing I mean at the end of this turn, he's really hurting for models. Uh, the the one concern that I still have is that he has his monstrosities in there, getting dangerously close um, with the agitator and with telekinesis. If it were to hit uh, Iron Mother, um, it would be pretty devastating for me. I mean, it could just end the turn um, if I'm not careful. And again, uh, I really could I could have moved the cipher up closer, but uh, my concern is that Exxon Texas's feet just pushes my models back. So. Uh, that would still clear up a charge lane. Pretty much what I do at the very end is I just uh, move the um, Steel Soul Protector close to Iron Mother to try to stop any type of uh, range attacks. And then after looking over the table, uh, that's my turn. Um, so I end up uh seeing a nice little gap between the objective and his heavy for me to uh, hopefully telekinesis uh, mother's butt towards my wrecker so he can get to her and go for the assassination here um, and then you know he ends up knocking over my agitator um, so since he hit me directly with the uh, with the rough terrain there on my on top of my wrecker I'm just kind of doing some math here and hopefully uh, I'm able to 
TK him forward a little bit so he doesn't have to deal with so much of the rough terrain and uh, if I hit mother with that other telekinesis then I'll be able to get him with that charge and hopefully get him um, but that's my plan for this turn so we're, we're gonna see how it works out here sit here and count my focus for a little bit make sure I do all my math right and uh, you know putting three onto the wrecker and holding on to five so I can boost to hit that telekinesis on uh, on mother there since uh, my subduer on the bottom of that screen there is going to be unable to advance far enough to to net her and bring her forward um, with all that rough terrain You know, measuring control area, making sure all my math's right, and we're gonna try to go for it. I think more of this turn is planning than it was actually playing, but I guess that's part of the game too. I'm going to make sure that I'm moving him exactly enough, uh, about two inches through that rough terrain. Um, make sure he's right there. And I think that puts me an inch still in, so or half an inch, so I have to use an inch of movement. Um, and I want to make sure here that uh, I move Exelon Texas out of uh, the wrecker's way so he can still charge Mother, so I, I end up moving him back a little bit. Um, Making sure that she's still in range since she's on that hill, I can see her behind the objective. So I end up hitting her, um, I think right on the nose, I don't remember because the dice aren't on the screen obviously, but I end up turning her around right where I needed to be, um, move up my agitator, which I often forget to do, but luckily I remember this time, use my 5 inch bubble of plus 2 to hit and plus 2 damage. Um, I'm doing some math for my charge here, and I'm getting her with the reach. Um, he ends up charging for free because there's an enemy in my command range, which is awesome for Exelon. I, I love that ability on him, honestly. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna try to hit her in the in the rear here, and uh, we end up hitting um, after boosting the hit to make sure I get that hit off and do a bunch of damage and end up uh, getting her. So it was a good game.